Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here and I'm still an alpha male. Today I'm doing a highly requested video on a family channel known as the Sakoni Jolies, who have recently been using their trans kid for fame on YouTube and TikTok, which is the tip of the iceberg of a number of controversies that have been going on for years. If you've been around a while on this channel, you know my opinion on family channels, but I've actually been following the Sakoni Jolies for a while. I even used to watch them all those years ago when they just had one kid. But watching their videos in recent years has given me a very specific kind of gross and uncomfortable feeling knowing that these kids have been exploited by their parents literally from birth. A few weeks ago they deleted all their thousands of vlogs from their YouTube channel which has nearly 2 million subscribers. They presumably did this as damage control as lots of moments from their old vlogs and old interviews are currently being dragged up. This would have actually been a very good move and I probably wouldn't be making this video if they had genuinely deleted all footage of their children from the internet. But they didn't. Their children are still making them loads of money all across Instagram and TikTok and they ended up putting a load of videos back on their YouTube channel anyway so I guess they just had to take them down for a moment to vet them before we could. The Sakoni Jolie started as a fairly innocent family daily vlogging channel around the Zoella era of YouTube. The channel was created in 2009 and originally focused on the parents. Then in 2012 they had their first child and that child quickly became a prominent feature on the channel. Over the years as they had more kids their channel grew and pretty much became exclusively centered around the kids, reaching their height of popularity around 2014 to 15. The channel consists of Jonathan Jolie, Anna Sakone and their four kids and they have vlogged their lives every step of the way with every pregnancy announcement, birth and every milestone for their children. Their children's entire lives have been filmed and put up on the internet for millions to see from birth. But there's more. Stacey Dooley is a TV presenter and documentarian here in the UK and in 2019 she actually spent a weekend with the Sakoni Jolies to get an insight into their lives as part of her series Stacey Dooley Sleeps Over. The documentary has been circling again recently especially on TikTok because some of the things that were picked up on are still extremely relevant three years later. There are certainly interesting conversations to be had. You know, they filmed the birth of their child. You know, it's very sort of Truman Show vibes. You know, will there be consequences? Will the children grow up to regret having their entire childhood aired? Having watched the documentary both when it came out and now, there are a few key moments that I picked up on. Like this moment where Jonathan's trying to get his baby to say a word and instead of just having a moment with his child, he sticks the camera in the kid's face so that all that kid can see before they can even speak is a camera in their face instead of their dad. Okay. Although I'm no stranger to the camera, playing the new role of the nanny as part of the Sakoni Jolie brand is going to take a bit of getting used to. Distracting him now. Sorry, sorry. Good. Another key moment is when Stacy asks the two eldest children if they like being in the videos, and one doesn't respond while the eldest just says no, which is pretty telling. Do you like being in the videos? You don't mind, do you? What about our fun music videos you used to make? That almost killed me. <laughs> no, nothing. You think it's okay that mommy and daddy make videos every day? No. Every second day? No. Middle. Middle? Middle. Do you like being in the videos? No. No, please. It's understandable. He's going to say no to everything. Is it a no day? Do you like no. your sandwich? No. Do you like water? No. Do you like the farm? No. Do you like no, me? No, no, no. Yes. Yay! <laughs> I think that if a child says no to being filmed, even if they're saying no to everything that day, they should be taken seriously and you should continue to ask them. If a child expresses that they don't like being filmed, a parent should, in my opinion, seriously look into that because you don't have their consent to film them and you never have and now they're speaking out against it. Interestingly, Stacy does try and have this conversation a few times with the parents and Anna does acknowledge it but justifies it by saying that they don't show the kids in a bad light. But my question is, how would she know what her kids won't want online when they're older? Some people just won't understand parents that choose to expose their kids to strangers. We're really mindful of what we put out there. Mm -hmm. So we've never shown like fights 
We've never shown tantrums, we've never shown potty training, we've never shown things that we think would embarrass them later. Mm -hmm. We made the conscious decision to put ourselves out there, but they didn't get a choice. So mm -hmm. we're always really mindful of like, okay, well, we're not gonna show them in a bad light. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna show like the cute moments. So it's not like their entire life. She then goes on to say that them reading the comments later in life won't be that bad and basically says that if they complain she will manipulate them by saying look how much money you've made for us essentially. Do you worry that when they are that bit older they will read the comments and they will take it to heart? I do worry about that but then you can't protect your children from everything and there's always going to be a bully in the schoolyard or there's going to be somebody that says something negative, whether it's in a comment online or in real life. It's, if that's the worst thing that they have to come up against, then so be it, you know? Like there's so many worse things that are going on in the world that I just think they're lucky. I would want to teach them that as well. Like, don't you like going to private school? Don't you like the things that we've, been able to afford for you or like that we've been able to give you because of this lifestyle like just looking at it that way and like from the bigger picture I think puts it all into perspective and if somebody left a crappy comment about you they're just it's coming from a place of unhappiness for that person don't let it affect you silly. Stacy then interviews Jonathan about the types of people that could be watching his children and he seems disturbingly unbothered by the implications even saying is it a terrible thing How would you feel in your heart of hearts if it became apparent that a pedophile, a sexual predator, had been looking at your children? Had been looking over your children, for example? It, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's such an odd question because how, how would you, like, I don't know how, you, how you'd feel. Like, obviously, it's, is it a terrible thing? It's like. I don't, I don't really know how to answer, like, because I would say, like, you know, because all I do is, I, I don't know, I don't really make content for that purpose. I just make it as difficult as I can for my content to be consumed that way. I don't think there's any footage out there. There probably was in our early stuff, and I admit that, and we made mistakes, and everyone Bath did. Bath time and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we kind of, because it was cute, and we had one kid, and we were like, this is fun, and stuff like that. A lot of them have been taken down now. We've removed a lot of them, and same with the pictures that we've had on our, on our social media. We just kind of like, live and learn. The documentary ends with a quite hostile conversation between Jonathan and Stacy, where he gets very defensive and suggests that you can't know, unless you have a child, how they feel. To me, it looks like he'd had to have this conversation quite a few times just with the way that he jumped on the defence. And I suppose my concerns would be, you know, you don't know if it's going to have... You're just digging a hole right now. No, but I'm, I'm just telling... Are you asking me what I think? <laughs> I think you don't know if there's going to be any impacts long term mm. on their mental health, etc. If they will grow up and resent what you've done. How is your child not going to grow up and look back and look at the kind of things that you have done yeah. in your journalistic yeah. career and think, Oh my goodness, my mom is in this, or maybe something you do sparks controversy, and then later your child's friends read about this a decade yeah. later and think, did your mom actually do this? At any point, one of our kids, or two or three or four, could say, actually, I don't want to do this anymore, and we'd be totally fine with it. That would be it. Yeah. I mean, there's no question. But they're happy doing it. They're not stressed. They're not unhappy. They don't feel like they're, you know, performing monkeys. It's completely the opposite. Overall, this documentary was very telling and I can see why it's been circling again and why it might have sparked Jonathan's next move. Erase. 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 Erase all pictures of Ron! A few weeks ago, on the 20th of April, Jonathan started to delete all the videos on the Sakoni Jolie YouTube channel. He posted on Instagram saying that YouTube's not for them anymore and that he has to put his kids first. So instead, he's going to be making a podcast, carrying on forcing his kids to be in his TikToks and making confusing music videos. He posted a TikTok saying that he now wants his children to make their own story and it's time to stop filming them. A parent, you have children, you know how socially aware your children are. And that's when I started thinking, Maybe it's time to not only, you know, stop doing it, but also to sort of erase it. I love my children more than I love my YouTube videos. I just want to give them an opportunity to curate their own 
life story on the internet. Only problem is that the internet is forever and the kids are still being made to be in TikTok, so I don't really see how it's any better. I also think that deleting the YouTube videos was a knee-jerk reaction to getting a lot of backlash recently. The likelihood is that they saw people online speaking about their vlogs and started to privatise the problematic ones, then eventually just decided to move away from YouTube altogether and delete them all. I don't think they actually did this for the kids at all, I think they did it to save themselves. And again, this is just my opinion, but I guarantee if this was three years ago before TikTok took off, they wouldn't have deleted videos at all. They would have made a monetized apology video, but because YouTube is no longer their biggest platform, it was much easier for them to move off of it altogether. I doubt that Jonathan will take any further action on removing his kids from any other forms of social media anytime soon. Especially as just 10 days after announcing that he was erasing everything, he put loads of videos straight back up. He claims that he asked his two eldest kids what they wanted online, and again, I don't think that they can fully be aware of the implications of being online. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if he just continued making videos after this as if nothing happened. But the backlash that led to this mass erasure of their videos in the first place was coming from many places, but there's one that stuck out the most, and that is Jonathan Jolie's exploitation of his trans kid and their gender identity for views. So on top of sticking cameras in their children's faces from birth, there's one child in particular who they have basically outed online and used their gender identity crisis as a way to get views and attention. And this is mainly on Jonathan Jolie's TikTok account. Jonathan has also recently come out as non-binary using he, him pronouns and made that the subject of his book that's coming out. And that's totally fine because he has control of that narrative and how and when he comes out to people online. His eight year old child, however, does not. And that's where the problem lies for me. Jonathan paints himself as this super supportive and lovely parent and I 100% am behind a trans kid being supported and I'm so glad that Jonathan and Anna are listening to their child when they talk about gender and allowing them to live as the gender that they want to express. However, I don't think that that kid should be forced to be televised, especially because later in life when they have access to the internet and they search their name or their father's name, they're going to find people making transphobic comments and having debates about their identity online and that's something that a trans kid deserves to be protected from by their parents. And Jonathan's favourite child to feature on his TikTok by far is Edie, and some of the videos are sweet but they just shouldn't be put on social media for money and views in my opinion, they should be kept within the family. Whether he likes it or not he's putting his vulnerable child in harm's way. There's also the question of how Edie identifies in the first place, as there are videos where they seem less certain about their gender identity and like they're still questioning it. Which would suggest that once again Jonathan's been pushing his own narrative onto his child to get views and live vicariously through them whilst ignoring the gender dysphoria that's still going on within his child. When she was telling me how she used to have sleepless nights because she saw a video about puberty and thought like, I don't, am I going to grow facial hair? Am I going to like, I'm going to have babies, right? When I grow up, like I'm going to be a mommy, right? But I don't want to be a girl because then I have to be, have babies. <laughs> and then, uh, Do you it's incredibly dangerous and compromising to put your child in this position online, especially if they're not of an age when they can fully consent to it. When you are a child who's already dealing with your gender identity, you need support, not your parents sticking a camera in your face and outing you to the world before you might be ready to share that part of you. If this was a regular family who had never vlogged anything, it does make me wonder if they would have done all of this super supportive stuff like a gender reveal party or a name reveal party for their trans kid if it wasn't for show. I really do hope that behind the scenes they are being deeply supportive of this child. Overall, Jonathan just gives me incredibly weird vibes. He's extremely defensive. And there's an old video where his eldest child says that he stays up watching her and taking pictures of her. Who stays up the latest? Daddy, because he stays up at 11 and he always looks at me and stares at me and takes photos of me. Another video in the background, you can see Jonathan's chair facing his CCTV cameras and monitors around the house. And there are also some deeply disturbing clips that have resurfaced of him from his early vlogs that are massive red flags. We got this for Anna here. But she's kind of afraid to drink it. Look, it's glycerin, honey and lemon. Course of an air. It's actually a roofie. <laughs> We're making more kids. I got it. I got it. Oh god. I got it. 
Ooh, we have a two-way. Four-way? <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> ah, you got tongued! <laughs> Mile High Club friends. Here is the Mile High Club. We are the Mile High Club friends. In conclusion, I think that there's an extremely dark side to this family behind the scenes, especially the mastermind Jonathan Jolie. I think the way that he has orchestrated his kids to perform for views and fame, and the disturbing justifications that both him and Anna have had in the past to continue doing it. The more I look into the history of this family on social media, the more disturbed I get. And I think that's a key reason why the videos were deleted. If Jonathan actually cared about what he was exposing his kids to online, he would quit social media altogether, not just take a few videos off YouTube and then continue continue to exploit his kids on other platforms and national news. I think they'll continue to get defensive and justify to themselves that they're doing the right thing because of the guilt of a decade of child exploitation is probably too much for a parent to truly come to terms with. They're also using the excuse a lot of if anyone comes out and speaks out against their exploitation of their trans kid, they just call that person transphobic and then that's easy for them to deflect. I just think that it's sad and I hope that eventually these kids get off the internet and use all the money that they have made for their parents to get the therapy and help that they need. So that has been my take on the Sacconi Jolies. Thank you for tuning in. I have as always been your Uncle Herman and I will see you very soon in my next video.